Hi there, Rose Hedberg here, your writing coach and founder of Ideas Right Now. In today's video, we are going to be talking about that very sticky situation of character count, how you can make some bold changes to your writing at the last minute if you need to get your character count in check. Let's dive in. I want to paint you a picture. I was writing my first ever grant proposal. I was feeling great about it. I had made my narrative skeleton, copied all the questions from the foundation website into my own Google Drive. I had even copy and pasted the grading criteria. I was on top of it. I spent weeks trying to answer all these questions. I knew that I had a character count limit of 750 characters. No problem. Got this. Day before the grant deadline, I log on to the founder's website. I'm copying, I'm pasting, and my heart stops. I see that devilish red color telling me that my characters are over my limit. Not by like one or two characters, but eight or 10, which is a whole word. That is dramatic if you've been spending weeks trying to condense all this information into the perfect combination of words to fit that character count. I'd made the huge mistake of not realizing how Google Drive was counting my characters without counting bullet points or indentations or punctuation. SurveyMonkey, which is where I was copying my answers and filling out my application in, did count those indentations. They did count bullet points and therefore my character count was off. I had to make some drastic decisions and I had to make them fast. I want to share with you what I did, my five steps for drastically cutting out unnecessary words so that you can fit those character count restrictions. Step number one, you are going to dive in and get rid of those adjectives and adverbs. These are parts of speech that really don't hold up our sentences. They are lovely outside of grant writing, but you don't need them in grant writing and they are the first to go. Think of the words that end in L-Y quickly, swiftly, efficiently, begrudgingly, all of those words, they're nice to have, but they do not support your sentences. So you want to hop through your draft and see if there are any areas where you can cut out adjectives and adverbs. Let's hop over into my draft and see if there's anywhere that we can cut out those adjectives and adverbs to save ourselves some characters. So here's the draft I was working with in Google Drive. Pro tip here, if you use the Command F key on a Mac or Control F on a PC, you'll see that in the top right hand corner of your browser, this box will pop up and you can search for keywords. I tend to search for those L, the letters LY and then I can hop throughout my draft as this Control Find will look through the entire web page that you're on to see if those letters come up. This is a faster way to search for those adverbs or adjectives and then to see if they are necessary or if you need to get rid of them. In this example here, I have used the word particularly. Now, if I were to delete particularly from this sentence, does it still make sense? We are interested. Yep, makes sense. I've got that word out and saved myself some characters. Here's another example. I use that control find ly and it has come up with the adverb currently. If I delete currently from this sentence, does it still make sense? The schedule of outdoor and STEM activities they host. Yep, still makes sense didn't support my sentence, get it out of here. So go through your document, find those adjectives and adverbs, read out loud, and if the sentence still makes sense when you cut them out, then you don't need them and it's a great place to get your characters back. Step number two, you are going to look for conjunctive adverbs. These are the words that we use before independent clauses that kind of lead into what we're talking about. Words like however, again, yet, also, anyway. Nice words, great parts of speech. You don't need them. So go through your document, see if there's anywhere that maybe you have used these conjunctive adverbs to introduce an idea, but you don't need to. Let's hop back into my document and see if there's any of those words that we can cut out. I use that control function to look for a specific conjunctive adverb that I know I use all the time also. Here it is in my document again. If I can delete also in this sentence and it still makes sense, then I'm going to decide to take it out permanently. Here it says, collaborating with 826 National would also result in more data to analyze the connection between creative writing and creative critical thinking, leading to greater self-esteem. A bit wordy of a sentence here. Let's see what happens if we get rid of that conjunctive adverb. Does the sentence still make sense? 
collaborating with 82.6 National would result in. It still makes sense. It's actually stronger now that I haven't said that this is an additive point. I'm just stating clearly, this is what will happen. So get rid of those conjunctive adverbs. However, yet again, anyway, also get them out of there if they're not supporting your point and you need some extra characters. Step number three is looking through to see if there's any conjunctions you can get rid of and or but so these are your joining words they are bringing ideas together either in dependent or independent clauses and a lot of times we can actually get rid of them to create separate sentences and save ourselves some characters let's go through our document again see if there's any conjunctions we might be able to cut out and replace with a full stop now i use a lot of conjunctions and or but so i did a quick search here to look for and it is the most popular conjunction that you can get rid of because oftentimes as writers, we will list things in a series. You can get rid of that series sometimes and just limit it to one, i.e. get rid of that conjunction. You'll notice here in a sentence, I have said, rote learning frames the world in set ways and, and I've continued on with another idea. However, here I have two separate clauses, independent clauses that I've conjoined with that and. I'm gonna get rid of it. And instead I'll put in a period, a full stop, and see if this actually reads better and saves me some characters. Getting rid of that conjunction here, we can see rote learning frames the world in set ways, full stop, great declarative sentence. We're moving on to the next independent clause. We've saved ourselves just a few characters, but it's still characters nonetheless by deleting a conjunction. So hop through your document, see if there's any and or but so's you might be able to get rid of by creating two separate sentences. Step number four is thinking about word choice. Perhaps you've gone through and added a lot of technical jargon that may not be relevant to delivering the point you need to. Ask yourself, would a fifth grader explain it in this way? I encourage you to answer this question because a lot of times we might add words or elevate words where we don't necessarily need to in grant writing. We might use an eight character word, such as uncovered, instead of a five character word, like found. They have the same meaning, the same impact and delivery, but you're saving yourself a few characters. Another example would be using the word initial to talk about project steps when the ordinal number first would do just fine and you'll save yourself a couple characters there. So again, ask yourself, would a fifth grader explain it in this way and where else can I save myself some characters by using a simpler word? Lastly, step number five is a little more critical thinking, but I urge you to read out loud and listen. That means that you are actually listening for the areas in which you are tongue-tied. You're also listening for the times that you might reiterate a point in back-to-back -back sentences when one sentence will do just fine to deliver the point that you need. Let's hop over into this document, see if there's anywhere that I might have reiterated a point or been a bit too wordy in my sentences. Here in the document, I've gone through, I've reread out loud, I've been listening, and I found one spot here that needs to be fixed. I'm talking about the root of the problem in this question, or I need to be answering that. The first sentence is great. We are working against a social policy of self-censorship to the point of silence. Short, declarative, clear that there is a problem. Silence is bad. Then I go on to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, is a narrative that situates acceptable conversations, blah, 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 blah. The sentence here is just filler. I'm reiterating the idea of how silence is and why silence is bad, why it is the problem. I'm going to try and delete this sentence because it doesn't add to the question to see what happens. Now, does the sentence still make sense if we get rid of this wordiness that was in the middle? Let's try it out. We are working against a social policy of self-censorship to the point of silence. To get to the root of the problem, we work at the individual level. Now, I've definitely stripped a ton from this paragraph. However, I've introduced the problem in one sentence, talking about silence, and then I've gone straight to how we get to the root of the problem. This is an example here of having read out loud, thought about the question I meant to answer, and realizing that I was getting a little too wordy. I was reiterating a point that I didn't need to. So go through, reread your draft out loud. I promise that your head, your voice, you will hear the places where you are tongue-tied, wordy, or you might've reiterated a point that you didn't need to. So these are the five tips that you can use if you need to drastically cut out unnecessary words, get back some of your characters right at that grant deadline. 
We want to hear from you. Have you ever been in the sticky situation of character count right at the deadline? What did you do? What steps did you take? Drop us a comment below. We'd love to hear how you handled the situation. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more writing tips and grant writing tips and hit that notification because you never want to miss out on a future video. Thanks. My name is Rose and happy writing.